Yes, again, welcome to the daily market analysis. In this video, we'll be talking about the dollar index rejecting that 102 resistance level, and I will be breaking down the possible rate cut from the BOC later tonight. But first, Okay, okay, so we are back. No live stream today. I mean, Diana was just asking, no live stream today. I was busy recording a video, especially for those of you who are or who have already signed up for the TSRI MACD strategy. Um, you can check out the video in my channel. 100 trades, back tested, 80% win rate, 4,000 pips um, over seven months. Um, over five different currency pairs over seven months. So that video is there. Um, the step-by-step -step guide for the strategy was what I just did this morning or the afternoon. So if you haven't already signed up for the free TSRI MACD strategy, do make sure you check out the links and sign up for that. Okay, um, I'll put the links into this video as well. Um, if you're watching this not on a live stream <clears throat> now with all that said first oh, first off a big and hello big hello and good morning to Diana Lin Lee how are you doing Jimmy hope you're well welcome back again from your holidays uh, hey John Drow hey Drew Marinas hey YJ good to have you all back with me again if you're on the session do drop a message and say hi let me know where you're joining us from and you can help me out massively by remembering to click on that like and subscribe button that would help massively if you have any questions at any point in time please feel free to put it into the chat and let me know okay hey Ronaldo, how are you doing <clears throat> now with all that said um markets you know i almost while i was doing my video i was trading um i do five things at a time um but markets have been running absolutely riot right markets have been running absolutely riot we've had trades i had a i had a trade on gold where i was sh shorting it down and as quickly as i put in the trade it shot down hit my take profit a small take profit and then i got out right so that was a fast trade i didn't even notice that it went down hit my take profit i came back and i looked at it i was like am i on the right account i, I run multiple accounts right so i was like oh yeah it's gone it's hit my take profit and it's out um, and right across all the yen pairs, that's what's been keeping me busy on the trading front. But, 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 let's look at what has happened since the last time we spoke. In terms of news, no big surprises last night. ISM manufacturing PMI for the US was a 46.8, expected 47.5, got released at a 47.2. No big surprises there, but the dollar index did move higher. It did test or come close to testing that 102 resistance level. It looks like it's going to push back down now. Um, there are a few things that needs to happen before that comes around. We'll talk about that shortly. <clears throat> Through to today, we had the Aussie GDP quarter on quarter being released. It was a, it was a 0.1. So revised up to a 0 0.2, um, forecasted to be 0 0.2, came out at a 0 0.2. So GDP was released quarter on quarter as expected. Um, a whole bunch of PMI numbers to be released later, well, in 10 minutes time starting with the Spanish, the Italian, the French, the German PMI numbers to be released. The Euro services and the UK services PMI to be released as well. I'm not too bothered with the services PMI at this point. I think that I will continue watching well, my, my trading bias for today especially. I think it might change later on, but for today especially will be to look at the BOC. Well, to be, sorry, my trading bias for today will still be on the yen 
as you see the dollar yen turning to the downside, pushing lower, rejecting that 147 level, continuing that correction back down, and also onto gold, but more onto yen um, in particular. All the way through to tonight at 9.45 p.m. where GMT plus 8, where we have the Bank of Canada, the BOC, with their interest rate decision. And it looks like they're going to go from a 4.5% down 25 basis points to a 4.25%, right? Um, not expecting any surprises here. Looking at the BOC, well, looking at the previous data from coming from Canada, economic data coming from Canada, um, it kind of makes sense that the BOC does take a action to cut rates by 25 basis points. So no big surprises there. We'll look into that um, when we look at the loony. We look into how the CAD could react. I do anticipate, right? If you look at this, they were in July, right? In July, it was a four point seven five. Oh well, hang on. Before that, um, in June they were at five percent. In April, all the way through to June, when it went from five to four point seven five. 25 basis points and then in July they went from 4.75 to 4.5 another 25 basis points now again from 4.5 to 4.25 most likely okay so we'll look out for that um, we'll talk more about it when we look at the CAD later on I do think that we might see some good reaction to come from the loony especially as it sits along that key level okay um, and then at the same time well not the same time by 10 o'clock 15 minutes after that rate decision we have the jolts jobs openings for the us remember again chair powell during jackson hole symposium said that um well he didn't ex i can't remember whether he said exactly that um the fight against inflation seems to be won now it's back to focus on um, employment numbers and ensuring that they're at, well, not at capacity, but working out the slack in that employment um, side of things, right? So JLTS jobs openings, 18.8.18 to 8.09. I don't think it's going to be too crazy. I might even be thinking that we might see a little bit of a, push to the upside right and maybe it may be a bit of a better number here from the jolts jobs openings <clears throat> then again remember today is wednesday the 4th of september with for tomorrow we do have the adp non-farm employment change unemployment claims for the u.s not to bother about services pmi and then on Friday, we have the non-farm employment change to be released, 114 to expected 164K. All right. Um, now, question there from Diana about Tradiac. Seems like they're gone. Um, the, I think there was some takeover, buyover, merger, something that's happening there. The trading seems to be going on okay. Um my last withdrawal was okay. I haven't done any withdrawal since, so I haven't tried yet. Um, but we'll stay tuned. We'll see what how it plays out. But it seems like it's just a merger. I haven't got more information from them at this point. Right? I think it's a merger. So it seems like they're gone, but they've merged with something else. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out more. If I get any juicy information, I'll do a video and we can. Um, sh I'll share that around as well. Okay. Um, hey, Augusto, how are you doing? Good afternoon. Hope you're well. Now, with all that said, let's look at the dollar index. Okay, dollar index. We were talking about this yesterday where I was, I wanted to see it drop. I wanted to see it drop. It didn't, right? It didn't drop that bullish rectangle so that push to the upside and then the horizontal rectangle we did see right after our session i'll zoom in a little bit right we had our session right there 
right? Right after our session, we saw the dollar index push to the upside. Um, by 8 o'clock, it came right back down, still within that rectangle. Let me take that away. Too many rectangles, right? Still within that rectangle. So it broke out, came right back in, couldn't break lower, and then push up again to as high as 101.90 before coming back down again within that rectangle, right? So I highlighted 102 as that nice round resistance, round number resistance level that the dollar index could test, reject, and push back down based on that arrow. It's come close and it's pushing back down again. So let's take that away. So on the dollar index front, Still sitting in that area, I would say that today being the 4th of September, still in consolidation, we've watched the resistance at 102, it seems to have held, right? So we're looking for that downside, it needs to break below 101.50, which is this level here to push down towards 101.15, which is this level here. So we're still looking for this move to the downside on the dollar index. I'll keep that view. Um, we're now at 101.61. This area is going, you know, remember yesterday when I drew that big, I just deleted it, but when I drew that big question mark in this area, it's still that question mark, especially between 101.60 and 101.50, all right? So I wouldn't do anything. I'll do very short-term trades. I'll do quick scalps. I will uh, get in, get out of trades. I wouldn't hold anything for too long um, as it stays within this area. I wanted to break this point before I'll see further downside. Uh, sustained weakness on the dollar index. Take that away as well, is what you would see that um, it's not a head and shoulder, but it's gone up, it's tested, it's pushed, um, it's tested. We want it to form a bit of a lower low in this area for that break to the downside. Okay, so dollar index still in consolidation, looking for downside, needs to break 101.50 to trade down to 101. 15 which is down here right and i think that based on the news i don't see any big reasons why it would i don't see a news reason a fundamental reason on it pushing down uh, no i don't see a fundamental reason from now but it's more from the previous on it pushing to the downside Okay, um, just for interest, a quick check on the CME Fed Watch tool. It's the 4th. It's the 4th of September. We are, now you see that. Okay, um, it's the 4th of September. The decision is on the 18th of September. You're seeing an increased, an increased likelihood for a 50 basis point rate cut to come from the Feds. Right? It was 70 just not one day ago, a couple of days ago. Um, it dropped down to a 57% chance for a 25 basis point rate cut. Now it's down 40, now it's up to 43% for a 50 basis point rate cut to come from the Fed. Now that's possibly the reason why the increased likelihood for a bigger uh, cut interest rate cut from the Fed Reserve is possibly one of the reasons why we see that rejection of that 102 resistance level to push back down. Okay, so I'll keep that. Then looking at the Kiwi dollar, <coughs> right, looking at the Kiwi dollar, we had that push. We said that it was going to test and reject. It didn't actually test and reject is set right across before pushing down so that shouldn't have triggered your trade right i'm very clear i wanted to test that resistance to push back so it didn't do that wouldn't have entered that trade or didn't enter that trade at all 
Now you see that it came down, tested that 38.2 level, and it looks like it's trying to push back up. Okay, let me show you that that way. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, what? I'll change this to a dotted. Although there are a couple of key levels here that have reacted, but right now it's broken those levels quite easily. Right, it's broken those levels quite easily. So I changed that and I'll put that as a resistance level. Now looking at this, what we're looking for is that the Kiwi dollar, that looks like it's threatening to push down. So that should mean that the Kiwi dollar pushes up, okay? Um, but remember that yesterday we were talking about some um, economic data, something about the Kiwi economic data being not as good as the anticipated, or some difficulties coming around. So we are looking at, that's why we saw the Kiwi dollar push to the downside. I would actually consider that, I wouldn't consider buying this up. Right, as much as the dollar index could push down, um, I'm thinking that if the dollar index doesn't push down, if it stays within that range, or if we see this push down, okay? So I wanna still be looking for that opportunity at 61, I don't wanna do 6170, 6165. So I'm looking at that sit in that area. I'm looking for it to break. I'll do a 20 pip stop. I'll do a 60 pip take to the downside. Actually, you have your first hesitation here and then your 60 pip take to the downside. Okay, just because of how it's reversed back down, you have that holding prices lower as well. So it could sit there and then I'll look for it to break to the downside. So 6165, 20 to 60 to the downside. 6165, stop loss 20, take profit 60 to the downside. Still looking for that push, right? See, look at that. Dollar index trying to push lower but yet on the kiwi we're still sitting it we're still seeing it sit right across it should have been showing us some upside move so i'm thinking that the pressures to the downside could push the kiwi lower now with that then on to the aussie that head and shoulder broke that level as it broke last yesterday morning Continued lower, push right down. Take that away. I feel that that's done. All right. And then when you look at this, how it's come down to this point here. I don't need that. How it's come down to this 50% level now forming a little bit of a double bottom, or well not a little bit of double bottom here, right? Um, and then this is a bit more natural, right? You see the dollar pushing down and you see the Aussie dollar trying to push up. That makes a lot more sense than what the Kiwi is doing. So I would say that I'll be more happy to buy the Aussie up if we see that dollar weakness um, rather than Kiwi. So I'll be looking at this on, but I wouldn't rush into it yet, right? Also because the, also because the, the dollar index hasn't formed that bias to the downside. It's still sitting in that area. So you don't want to rush into this. It's not a point to buy at 6715. 
23.6 there broken even if i took this higher point i wouldn't be looking to buy at that point i feel like it might be a little bit too early okay um, what i think could happen on the aussie would be that it pushes up it tends around this level it comes back down and then you look for that push back up especially if the dollar does continue to weaken then I'll be looking at that point at 6740 above 6740 you'll be looking at 6750 stop loss 20 take profit up to 50 pips towards that resistance area in fact Again, very similar to that, I would change that and consider this because that's where it reversed from as my resistance. So you could even be looking at a 70 pip move to the upside on the Aussie dollar. Okay, so that's what I'll be looking for. 6750, 20 to 70 to the upside for the Aussie dollar. Um, now I'm just going to write it down. I'll be looking to buy at 0 0.6750, stop loss 20, take profit 70 to the upside on the Aussie dollar. Okay, not ready yet. Again, please, not ready yet. Don't rush into that. There is time. Um, then Aussie Kiwi, it's just in the, it didn't trigger that upward move. It came right back down. Aussie pushing to the upside, Kiwi coming back down could drive this higher, um, but I wouldn't do anything at this point. Same thing, I would look for it to break above that 38.2 level, 1.09, before we look for that upside move. I kind of prefer not to do anything on the Aussie Kiwi at this point. I think that it'll be more worthwhile trading the Aussie rather than the Aussie Kiwi. Right, the Aussie or the Kiwi rather than the Aussie Kiwi at this point. So nothing at this level because it's right in the middle of those two points. Even if it does push up, you get a better opportunity on the Aussie dollar to the upside. Okay, so... Let me see. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't need that actually. Yeah, okay. Don't do anything there. It's just right in the middle. Not worth sticking your neck out for this um, at this point. Then on to the pound dollar. Right, pound, dollar, we were talking about this. We're looking to buy it up, could look to sell it down. We spent a lot of time on this yesterday as we were sitting there going, it should go up, oh, it could go up, it should go down. It's sitting right at this support slash resistance level. What's going to happen? It did push down earlier or well, late last night, but it didn't have a big sustained move. It popped right down outside of the Bollinger, sat there, and then came right back up again. Now, at this point, take those away. Right, if you did get into that, oh wait, sorry. If you did get into that, you would be about break even now. So it's uh, sitting right there. If you didn't, I wouldn't be looking at this. Um, 23 broken take that away 38.2 is holding i'll keep that point right it looks like um i see a question there about oil i haven't got a view on oil but we can look into that shortly um pound services pmi only the dollar left to drive it so dollar weakness, hopefully, fingers crossed that it does play out to the downside, would drive this up, right? Check the H4. 
kind of like it to go up. And we were talking about this yesterday as well. I think it would still be that same view where we're looking at 1.3160. Stop loss will be 25 to 30 pips. Take profit would go up to 100 to the upside or even 60 here would be reasonable. All right, uh, let me just check this. I don't like this as my, so I changed this back to a golden resistance, push up, test about that area there. All right, so 1.31603, 30 to 60 to the upside by uh, 1.31. 60 30 to 60 to the upside on the pound dollar look it's came down it's trying it's bounced back up a bit so it's just sitting in there it you know based on the again on the tsr mac it looks like it could push down but i'm thinking that it will sit there in consolidation before maybe pushing back up okay um yep okay then on to the euro we've had take that away for now we've had when i refresh that the spanish services pmi no big surprises there euro pushing back up slightly bouncing off that 38.2 level i was very hopeful that we could see it bounce off 1.1 to the upside it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen All right it doesn't seem like that's going to happen soon um you're looking for a move like that right it needs to go past this point so we know it's got 38.2 it needs to break past that area to push up especially with that dollar trying to push down i'm repeating myself um, but that pushes up you look for 1.1080 I want to give it a bit more space I think that that could but I'm actually looking at those points here I wonder if that's going to be my 61.8 there you go I'm actually looking at this area here so I'm thinking that it could even come up to that point at about 65 pips to the upside all right so you want that to break above this point your stop loss would be about 25 pips your take profit about 60 pips to the upside on the euro dollar bearing in mind that this is a um, counter trend trade right it's been it's not a channel but it's been pushing down so this is a counter trend trade I would be looking therefore on the euro to buy up at 1.1080 is it hang on yes 1.1080 25 to 65 25 take profit 65 to the upside and I like that I actually do like this quite a bit um, if especially if the dollar can break lower you would see a pattern a bit like of that so you might see that test i think it might be a bit too much of an ask for the inverted head and shoulder but we'll see what happens at that point if that forms i would love this i would love to buy the euro back up all the way to the top that would be perfect.
Okay, so I'll be looking for that onto the euro. I'll move that down slightly so we can see the candles. Um, then onto the euro pound, that if the euro does have that inverted head and shoulder or somewhat of a move to the upside, that is going to explain um, what we've been waiting for since yesterday or since Monday yesterday and now today for the euro pound to break above 8480 eh, 8440 20 to 60 to the upside on a euro pound right we were i was talking about this bouncing around it did bounce around a bit not to that big extent but we're looking for that break to the upside on the euro pound 8440 20 to 60 to the upside. Dragged up, potentially dragged up by the euro dollar to the upside. Yeah, still couldn't break that resistance. And it wasn't even a very strong resistance here um, on the euro pound, right? If I just catch that, it's just sitting along that point and it's struggling. Give it time, give it time. It could play out. I actually think that um, as much as I'm looking at that, I actually think that it might sit here, push back down a little bit before that. Okay, but it might come down to what this guy is going to do and the pound dollar as well. Um... Yeah. Diana, if you do get it, please, please put it into the Discord group. Um, I, I don't usually watch the Euro Pound, but I would love to get into that as well. So put it in and let me know when you are looking at that, okay? Or when it comes close. It might even come close within um, this session when we're talking about it. It seems like it's trying to break right now. Okay, um, then with that, we look at the yen, my favorite pairs, right? So that happened. Um, that happened on the dollar yen. This was, or well, this was Monday that we looked at it. We had tested 147. We had been looking for that rejection of 147. It pushed down on Tuesday. We spoke about that. On Tuesday, we were saying that if it breaks, that 38.2 to the downside, sell it down. I actually got in, where did I get in? Uh, let me just check. Okay, I got in there. I got in a bit earlier. So that point there, 41, no, 95, yeah. As it was turning back down, I looked at it and I go, okay, it's pushing down. I want to get in. I had my stop about. 35 no 40 to the upside can i'm not going to check the numbers but yeah so about that and then it pushed down right outside of the bollinger closed out i think i had 75 pips to the downside um on the yen super happy with that on the yen very quick i like quick trades right so got in quick one two hours got out um and then this morning i was highlighting to you guys on the discord if you're not on Discord, mailing list is um, in the descriptions below. Jump onto that. We'll send you the Discord link. Um, take that away. <clears throat> so Yen had a big push up. 61.8 highlighted. Came down to this point. Well, this morning, I think about there. About there, somewhere, I think after that, around that point here. I was saying, you know, we saw the euro, what happened on the euro yen. I'm, ex I'm looking for this on the US yen. Break 61.8 to trade down. Yeah, I think it was at 11. To break 61.8 to trade down towards that previous swing low. All right, so um, now looking at this, I would be looking at 144.70. Stop loss, I would be looking at 30, maybe even 40 pips. I'll give you a bit of space. 
take profit 120 to the downside. Okay, that's what I'll be looking for on the US yen. It sounds so simple, um, and sometimes it really can be. It really can be that straight, not simple, but straightforward. Sit there, wait for it to break that level to sell down 144.70, 40 to 120 to the downside. So, um, US yen sell 144.70, stop loss 40, take profit 120 to the downside. There we go. Dollar dropping helps with the US yen to the downside as well. Okay. You might not go for the full 120, you might even go 110 or 100, that would still make sense. I think 110 would be the most, what would be the middle ground? I think 120 is just, a could get there, but just a little bit op super optimistic. Then onto the Euro Yen, which is what I got, what I got into as it pushed down. Right, right after our session. So we talked about this during the session. We were looking for it to break lower. This was right after our session. Yes, our session was here. The next hour, it popped down. Right, it popped down and then it came back up. You see that it popped down outside of the Bollinger Band. Right, so didn't get into that. 50 to 70. No, I think I think yen has that potential. Yen does have that potential for that big move. Um, what else I can say? But da, 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 da. Ah, so Euro Yen, it, I saw that pop out. I was so tempted just to take the risk and trade it down. Sat there, didn't enter, waited for it to push back up again at the same time with the US Yen. I did US Yen, I did Euro Yen. So that was my trade on the close of that, no, on the start of that candle at 161.15 I got in, about there, right? 40 pip stop, 80 pip take profit, took, it took a lot longer, it popped down, it took a lot longer, all the way through to this morning I woke up, the trade was gone. The trade was gone, I was like, oh, wait, did it spike up or push down? It pushed down, hit my take profit, and that was done. Okay, so that was my Euro Yen and this is why I was saying that I'm keen on the US Yen as it's set along that 61.8 level because Euro Yen broke down from that 61.8 towards that previous swing low. And like Diana was saying, Euro Yen went down all the way up, catch stop loss and move lower. Went down all the way up catch stop loss and move lower oh okay i think that one you're talking about came down pushed up hit your stop and then came back down try trying to use the bollinger band i think that might help um might help a lot more than it it's so simple but it might help a lot more than um i don't know might help a lot more than you would expect okay so I love it. I love the Bollinger Band. So try, think, try it out. See what you think. Um, and if you've got a feedback on that, let me know as well. Now, um, but before that, hey, Erwin, how are you doing? Send the USDA with the heart. Hey, Jamil, good morning. Hope you're well. Um, that move, take that away. I don't, I don't want so many lines. Okay, so that point, 38.2. Okay, so you see here, 38.2 from this move. Since August, well, 5th of August, doesn't, it sounds like it's very far away, but it's not that long ago. 5th of August up to the 16th of August, we have 38.2, we have 50%, we have a nice round number here at 160. Right, so it came down, tested, bounced, tested in this area, tested in this area, and bounced. Now, testing and trying to bounce again, right? Trying to bounce again. Um, dollar pushing down. US yen deciding at the 61.8 level. Euro dollar trying to push up. 
if the euro dollar does push up that's likely to push the euro yen up but it's going to be a little bit conflicted with the us yen right us yen if it does drop it's going to try and drag the euro yen down the euro dollar pushing up is trying to drag the euro yen up it's going to be a little bit choppy all over the place um, so what I would be looking out for here, right, would be that 23, that 38. I think it's going to consolidate in this area here. You would, hmm. I would actually like to see it come down a little bit more, but I think that's a little bit unlikely, right? I wouldn't want to do anything at this point. You've seen how it only started breaking up above that point. It came up here, reverse, came up here, reverse, only when it broke past, then we saw a big push to the upside. So, what I'll be looking for here would be 161.25. I'm not expecting a big crazy move. Um, a 35 pip stop. You can have 60. You can try for, well, so much for not expecting a big crazy move. I don't see this happening. It's a technical setup, but I don't see that happening at all. Um, it's pushing down. I feel like the Euro Yen is going to consolidate. If all Yen pairs moving, um, by us yen i wouldn't trade up euro yen yeah i feel like it's going to be super conflicted at this point it could push up but it's going to come back down i actually want to like you know i don't see that big move going up even if the euro dollar does push up and that's why you know i technical setups are technical setups I kind of want to see the overall correlation and fundamentals behind it as well. I kind of want to see the euro yen come down towards, sorry, I'm moving my chart around a lot. Um, come down towards this support level here at 159.50. I prefer to look for a reaction here. So nothing, nothing too crazy on the euro yen at this point. We've made our money already. Give it a rest. Look for something else. Look at the pound yen. We talked about that level to break. We talked about that trend line to break to the downside. Now, I wouldn't scalp the euro yen yet. I think that scalping the yen would be fair. Um, scalping the euro yen might, at that near the support level, I wouldn't do it. Um, pound yen as well came right down in the middle. I didn't catch this to the downside. I was on the euro yen and the pound yen. Now at this point, coming down, you see it all. You see it all retracing slightly now. You would be looking at this point that if it breaks this two lows and this point here and the, U and the US Yen does drop below that 61.8 level, you're looking at 189.40. Stop loss will be 50. Take profit, don't go all the way down. Take that point there at about 90 pips to the downside. Right, you could target that support level, but I'm just watching that point there where it bounced off from. So you're looking at about 90 pips. You could go 100 if you really wanted that risk to reward ratio being 1 is to 2, but I want to see it break this point first. Okay. Yep, 
and um, it also needs to. Ah, uh, that's without saying. It's it's trending down. That's fine. That's what I'm looking for. US yen bouncing at that sixty one point eight needs time. Needs time. Give it some time to form up. All right. Then on to US Swiss franc. I see Jamil talking about um, his gold targets. So we'll, we'll talk about gold shortly. Just hang on there. US Swiss franc, look for it to test and reject. It didn't test and reject, but it did reverse right after we spoke about it. Back down again. Don't need that. Now looking at this dollar pushing, well, not pushing anymore, but sitting right there. I would say that I don't even want to put in the fit. Needs to break past this point or even this point here. Okay, fit level, you see that it's about that 50%. Fifth, between 50 and 61.8 needs to break that point. To trade down, you'll be looking at 8450 stop loss 20 take profit 50 to the downside maximum 40 to the downside would be comfortable 8450 there we go um sell at 0 0.8450 stop loss 20 take profit 40 to the downside then on to the us cad okay take that away take that away clear it clear it all out us cad the loony we have the bank of canada with their interest rate decision tonight we're looking at Potentially the BOC cutting rates by 25 basis points um, or cutting by 25 basis points to 4.25%. If they do cut rates that should weaken uh, the Canadian dollar, you'll see that on the 24th of July and the 5th of June. Right, to the 24th of July... There we go, right about there. There, you know, there. All right, so 24th of July, right there. It weakened the CAD to push up. Not a huge, huge, massive move because it's all telegraphed. It's, they've told you, they've done exactly as you expect, so they're not <coughs> going to see a massive move to the upside. But we did see the yen, the CAD weaken. I'm thinking about the yen too much. <laughs> um, then again on the 5th of June. Where are we? There. Okay, there you go. On the 5th of June, at that time where they cut rates, first time they cut rates, um, we saw that push up from 1.3670 within two hours up to 1.3742, came back down out because it was outside of the Bollinger, came back in and then pushed back up again. So it is, we are anticipating, or it's safe to anticipate some weakness onto the CAD, um, which could push this up, but we're sitting at 1.3548, 1.3550 right now. Big resistance here at 1.36. Nice round number. Dollar possibly pushing back down. So what I'm thinking we could see is a reaction on the US CAD on the rate cut decision to push it up towards that resistance, but not strong enough because we're not expecting a huge, huge move. Not strong enough, dollar weakness could drag it back down again. 
which would give us an opportunity not to trade the news. I wouldn't buy it up on the news, but to look for a rejection of 1.36. You'd be looking at 1.3580, stop loss, 30 pips, take profit. You have 60, you have 130 to the downside. Let's go for 60 first, back down again. Okay, so 1.3580, 30 to 60 to the downside. Um, sell at 1.3580, stop loss 30, take profit 60 to the downside. Okay, then, that all makes sense. Um, I know I have to look at US oil. Putra Raja just asked together with um, Tele List Media and also Euro Kiwi for Diana. Not a worry. Okay, so now looking at gold, right? Looking at gold. What we're looking at is it's pushed down. This was where we were yesterday, right at this point here. We're saying that price, choppy price action at 225.08. Beyond that, could trade up 25.20. It didn't even have a chance. It did not have a chance. We were right here. It pushed up to 25.06. Didn't get to 25.08. And then came right back down again. All right, came right back down again. I think I had a... Um, let me see. Where was my trade? Yesterday, I had a quick trade. 24... I can't remember what time was it, but 24.97. I just traded it up to 25.04 and then after that I sold it back I didn't sell it back down on this move so I do I try to do one trade a day just for gold just for the fun of it um, just this afternoon I did that push to the downside it was a quick trade within that hour within that hour it took 10 minutes for the trade to come down and close out within that hour there okay so that was a 10 minute trade um to the downside on gold now gold with all that said i get distra i distract myself sometimes uh with all that said if you look at euro trying to push up um sitting uh, sitting at this support level here at 2480 um jamil's three trade a week on gold yeah i got one a day um target at 2450 2454 2454 is down here okay i know why you're targeting it i know why you're targeting it because of that point which could make sense i'm looking at that holding prices from that resistance that one is pretty much done take that away i want to just highlight 2500 right there okay you got an h4 yeah same point um now we're looking to see what would happen to gold at this support level at 2480 Right, what would happen at 2480? I'm actually going to, I might be wrong. I might, a disclaimer applies, I might be wrong, but I'm going to contradict it. And I think that, because, you know, we're, we're thinking that gold uh, dollar index could push back down. Gold has dropped, right? Same move, holds above 2490. Payroll grabs line light, strong dollar caps upside. 
I'm, I'm thinking that unless it can break below that whole area, 2470, unless it goes below 2470, we're still tuned for a bounce on gold. Right? Because if you look at this overall move, right? Overall move is had that big fluctuation, it's gone up to 25.30, it's bouncing around. Unless it breaks below 24.70, we're going to see it, we could see it bounce back up. If it doesn't break, if it breaks through 24.70, then I think even beyond what you were thinking, I think even 24.40 could be quite um, possible. Right, so it's at that point. Now, what I would say for gold is that watch twenty four eighty uh, to twenty four seventy support area. If held, could then we're looking to bounce broken could trade down to 2440 right so look at this area between 2480 and 2470 if it's held then you could see a bounce like that if it's broken then we'll see it push down towards 2440 between this two, I know Jamil is um, more likely, more thinking that it's more likely to push lower. I I wouldn't be surprised if it does, and I would actually be more tempted to think that I wouldn't do anything now unless it breaks twenty four seventy. Right? I wouldn't do anything now in this area. If it breaks 2470, I'll be quite happy to sell it down to 2440. So that's, that makes sense. That will make the whole sense of this that look out for that support area. If it's held, look for bounce. If broken, could trade down to 2440. All right. <laughs> now with that, um then we look at euro kiwi i don't have it okay hang on um so with that then we look at euro kiwi very old lines take it all away let me just add this in Okay, there we go. Now looking at this, thanks, Muppet. Remember again, guys, if you're enjoying, if it makes sense and you like what you see, do help me out. Click that like and subscribe button. That would help. <laughs> Crazy pairs. No, it's good. It forces me to look at all kinds of different things. If not, I, I just sit there watching my major currency pairs. Um, now with that, then, and analysis is just analysis, right? It's the same, the same thing. I come in, I look at my support and resistance levels, and then we try to figure out where price could head towards. So it's right there in the middle. Um, resistance makes sense. We have that big level there don't need it for now that makes sense okay okay cool so now with all that traded this down looking to buy it up if 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 the euro dollar has that it's undecided now but if it has that big push up 
then yes, that could drag the euro kiwi up. You're looking at the kiwi dollar trying to push down, right? Showing some hope, setting up for some potential weakness. Um, we could see this kiwi weakness push it up. I don't think it is something to do right now. Okay, no, you can do it right now, but it's going to be a little bit risky. All right, so you would either be looking to um, buy it up from here or wait a little bit more. Then you'd be looking at, it's tight though, it's really tight. Yeah, then you'd be looking at that point as my resistance. So you'd be looking at that to the upside 1.7960. Um, 30, 40 pip stop, 160 pips to the upside. So you get 70 there, and then you have a big move, 160 to the upside. But it's gonna get choppy in there. You might be better off doing that and doing that hundred. That way for the euro kiwi, but I wouldn't do um, anything yet unless it breaks above that area. Okay. Um, then. On to, um, I like how you reacted on daily time frame from fair value. Pop down. I'm actually, you know, if we look at this, if you look at that. Yeah, okay, that's fair. If you look at the daily time frame, sorry, this is totally beyond and just totally um, something else to talk about. But if I take that away and I look at the daily time frame, what I would be looking for, and I kind of like that, is a push up, a test of that resistance and that 50% level, and then maybe a continuation back down again. So yeah, I think that on the H1, that's fair to look for that trade up towards that resistance. Okay. Um, and then on to US oil, uh, the last time I looked at it was back at 78 per barrel. So now it's down to 69. I mean, look at it on H4 support down here. No worries, um, Diana, most welcome. Thank you for your question. Thank you for forcing me to look at different currency pairs. Um, at this point, down here, catch that. So H1, see that breaking lower, you would follow the trend back down, it breaks below 69. Trade it down to 68 and possibly, what's the news? Oversupply fears, Libyan truce prospects. That would make it push lower. It needs to break past 68. So, you could do a quick scalp lower. Right, you could do a quick scalp lower, but I think that for greater confidence, you look for it to break 68 to get down to, well, for greater confidence, you want to wait and see what's going to happen at 68. If it breaks, you can see it go down to 66. Um, but 66 was a long, long time ago. In May last year, this was the low for last December last year. So you definitely want to wait to see what happens at 68. Not something I'm going to trade, but I, I used to look at it. I just didn't like that it was too many components that could cause it to 
fluctuate. So yeah, that would be my my quick view on US oil. Hope I answer your question there for the two guys who was asking. Um, so now with all that said, US yen is still sitting there, not doing too much. Okay, with all that said, please remember, trade well, trade safe. If you haven't already, the link, let me do that for you guys right now. Um, if you haven't already, please, please, please join my mailing list there. The link is there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Hopefully with a, with a live stream before. And then the analysis, we see how crazy I get. With all that said, please take care. Bye-bye.